Hello, I'm Virginia Eskin. Welcome to First Ladies of Music, a new series about women composers. This program is underwritten by a generous grant from Northeastern University in Boston. Welcome to Program 12. We've entitled it New Attitudes, and the first section will be about some lesbian women composers, the second British, and then we'll welcome two performance artists at the very end. Our first woman we're going to look at is Pauline Oliveros. She was born in 1932, still very much alive, and very unusual person in many ways. Pauline has had all kinds of commissions and has moved around the country. At one point, she was on the faculty out at UCSD in La Jolla, lived in California for quite a few years. And one time I was in Israel, and she was there. It was a big festival in women's music. Then I noticed that she's living back in New York State at the moment. She was able to study at the University of Houston as a child, and she is a very good accordion player. The music that Pauline writes is really very abstract, and I read somewhere as a child she loved to listen to her grandfather's radio, but she didn't listen to the programs. What she loved was all the in-between sounds when you'd go from station to station. She has moved to electronic music the way a duck takes to water, and all of her music also reminds me of the early chants and the tantric patterns of Hildegard. Remember the woman we studied and learned about way back in the beginning of our series? And by that I mean that the pieces that Pauline lays out are very full of patterns and sometimes humming, sometimes a tapestry of different voices coming and going. Of course, artists did that back in the Dada period. But what Pauline does is to weave different kinds of patterning and sound effects. Of course, there's a big score that goes with all of this. It, none of it is happenstance. She's always embraced things like meditation, tai chi. She's a karate expert. So I'm trying to paint a sort of a little sound portrait of Pauline Oliveros because she's not your usual composer by any means. She uses theatricality and humor and often asks members of the audience to participate. So in one word, she's full of experimentation. Let's listen to a work she wrote called Poem of Change. It's for voice and accordion, and it's by Pauline Oliveros. Is sexism real? Change the same thing. Change the other thing. Are people homeless? K. 
can we give up war? Change more things. Change Is racism real? Change slow things. Change few things. Do we respect nature? Change everything. Change beautiful things. Are children loved? Ch change the same thing. Change, change. foolish things. Foolish. Ch mm. You just heard a portion of Pauline Oliveras's Poem of Change. She wrote the words, of course, and she happened to sing and play the accordion. Now, our next woman is Paula Kimper. She lives in New York, is active as a composer for opera, film, dance, and the theater. And she wrote an opera called Patience and Sarah. And this was first heard at Lincoln Center in 1998. It's based on Isabel Miller's novel and is the first US opera to depict lesbian lovers. The words are very passionate. The section we're going to hear says, I want to live, I want to paint in blazing colors, my hopes in vibrant hues to paint a place where I belong. She's really acknowledging that she wants to be accepted and it's a brave thing. Let's listen to I Want to Live. It's the duet from act two of Paula Kemper's opera, Patience and Sarah. Thank you. 
You just heard Paula Kimper's duet from her opera, Patience and Sarah, I Want to Live. It was performed by soprano Laurie Ann Phillips and soprano Elaine Valby with an orchestra conducted by Stephen Osgood. Paula Kimper was born in 1962. She's active as a composer and a flutist. She got a doctorate from the University of Pennsylvania and by the late 1990s was receiving commissions for chamber works, orchestra pieces, choral works and she makes a living from these commissions. That's a very good thing. She's very concerned with the environment, trees, nature, clocks, time, poetry. All of these elegant sort of abstract objects find their way into Paula Kemper's work. Now we move to Jennifer Higdon, who was born in 1962. Born in Brooklyn, New York, but Jennifer grows up in the mountains of East Tennessee. She now lives in Philadelphia with her partner, Cheryl Lawson, and is on the faculty of the Curtis Institute of Music. 
She's received numerous awards, a Guggenheim Fellowship, and two awards from the American Academy of Arts and Letters. She is active as a composer, and she also continues to play the flute, and she conducts as well. We're going to listen to an odd work, Running the Edge, and I have to share with you that the word edge is spelled small case, E-D-G, and then capital E, so it sort of catches the eye. Let's listen to it. It's a work for two flutes and piano by Jennifer Higdon.
You just heard Running the Edge, composed by Jennifer Higdon. It's a work for two flutes and piano, played by Claudia Anderson and Jill Felber, with pianist John Pirenen. Our next woman is now going to belong in our section called British Women Composers. Her name is Judith Weir. She was born in 1954 in Cambridge, England. She studied privately with John Tavener. She's a fine oboist, and Judith Weir has played in the National Youth Orchestra of Great Britain. That's when she was young, of course. She went on to win a Kusevitsky Fellowship and eventually studies at Tanglewood with Gunther Schuller. A profound influence on her music has been folk characteristics from different traditions. All of Judith Weir's music is characterized by a narrative quality and has an element of storytelling. We're going to listen to two little pieces that will show these characteristics that we've been talking about. Strathsby and Reel is the first. The second is Jig, performed by the Lontano Ensemble, led by Odeline de la Martinez.
just heard Strathsby and Reel and Jig, composed by Judith Weir, and they were performed by the Lontano Ensemble, led by Odaline de la Martinez. You're listening to First Ladies of Music. We'd love to hear from you. You can send your comments via email to ladies at wfmt.com. You're listening to the WFMT Radio Network. Welcome back to First Ladies of Music. Our second person from the British Isles is Hilary Tan, who was born in 1947. She's considered a Welsh composer, and she's active in the US. She's an accomplished teacher and an academic. She studied with Milton Babbitt and many other important composers. Hilary Tan's output is not prolific, but it's always beautifully made and very carefully produced. She draws inspiration from Wales and its environment, as well as Japanese traditions. Hilary Tan's music is spare in texture, but it can be meticulous in its sensitivity to timbre. Some of her works are very lyrical, but she can also write in a strong, vehement way. We're going to listen to a work called Winter Sun, Summer Rain from her suite Airs from Another Planet. And again, it's played by the Lontano Ensemble, led by Odeline de la Martinez.
That was Winter Sun, Summer Rain, played by the Lontano Ensemble, led by Odeline de la Martinez, composed by Hilary Tan. Now we move to the performance artist section of our program, and we're going to address the iconic and very popular Icelandic artist Björk. Her full name is Björk Gudmundsdottir, and that just means she's the daughter of Gudmundur. Björk was born in 1966. She makes her home in London and in Reykjavik, and that's because she has an incredible recording studio in Iceland. She's considered a pop star and a songwriter, but as you will soon learn, she is classically trained. She studied violin with Helga Thoradinsdottir of the Iceland Symphony. She's become a superstar pop musician, and that's because of her really good classic grounding. Her vocal style is eccentric, and I think it's very effective. She climbs inside each song or work that she composes and makes it her own. She's not just reading and sort of reacting to the music. The music is reacting to her. You ask any young person about her and they'll automatically understand how rare and unusual she is. They seem to appreciate her enormous range of expression. I know that because I teach at Northeastern University and whenever I put on one of her CDs, my students, they know every cut they relate to everything she's done. They don't know how exotic and sophisticated Bjork is, but they get it. And what they are reacting to is her incredible sophistication. She's always evolving and creating the most cutting edge music. We're going to have two selections composed by Bjork. The first is called Hyperballad, and she has made a version of that as a song. But what you're going to hear here is played with the Brodsky Quartet, and they're a, a regular classical music string quartet. So the fact that they took a Bjork piece and all of them made it into a classical cut that they can use on their regular concert programs, I think that, again, it's very complimentary to Bjork. It shows that her skill at blending these styles, in that sense, she's a true crossover artist. Let's listen to Hyper Ballad. <laughs> Yeah, we do. 
just heard Hyperballad, which is a song that Bjork composed, and she performed it with the Brodsky Quartet here. I want you to listen now to another cut by Bjork, and this is one of her most famous pieces. Young people love this, and it's kind of funny. Whenever I'd put this on in my classroom, they thought I was sort of like some old fuddy-duddy, and they were so impressed that I even knew who Bjork was, let alone that I liked this cut, and I think you'll like it too. It's called it's oh so quiet.
you just heard It's Oh So Quiet, one of the trademark pieces composed by Bjork. We're going to wind up our show today with Laurie Anderson, who's perhaps the most famous of the living performance artists. She was born in 1946, back in Chicago. She's also, like Bjork, classically trained on the violin. But she took that background and turned it on its head. She created a machine that's like a vocoder. Sometimes she speaks and sings into it. Other times she takes a stringless electronic violin that makes very squeaky space-age sounds. So when you see her on stage holding that violin, you think, wait a minute, where's the bow? How's there going to be any music coming out of this? And sometimes it actually produces electronic sounds that are right in the act of whatever the piece is that she's presenting. She's very prolific. She has many, many recordings, and her website would be worth visiting if you like the sound of what you're going to hear. She's full of whimsy. She loves ponds, rivers, flowers, sun, sky. And this has been a theme that we've hit on before. I've mentioned some of our women composers who were interested in in the environment, the idea of bringing nature into their music. And I would say that Laurie Anderson is very big on that, but she also is very big on politics, very provocative when it comes to the political scene today. And we're going to listen to a piece she composed called Statue of Liberty, performed by Laurie Anderson on the violin. Moon rises and sets in the real
That was Statue of Liberty, composed by Laurie Anderson and played by her on the violin. I hope you've enjoyed this show. We were looking at three different sections of women composers who are working today. They're certainly imaginative and creative. And our last program is going to be a kind of a roundup of women composers from all over the world. I'm Virginia Eskin, and I hope you'll join us next time for First Ladies of Music. First Ladies of Music with Virginia Eskin is produced by Carolyn Pollan for the WFMT Radio Network. Steve Robinson is the executive producer. The engineer is Mary Mazurik. Thanks to Alice Abraham, librarian at WGBH Radio in Boston. And special thanks to Boston's Northeastern University for their generous support. I'm Virginia Eskin, inviting you to join me again next time for First Ladies of Music. This is the WFMT Radio Network. <laughs>